Hey guys, in this video, we're going to get started with API testing and debugging in Deno. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. In the first video of the series, we created a simple API using the Oak middleware framework for Deno's HTTP server. So let's see the code. And here we can see that we are using this application from the Oak framework. And also the router is part of the same framework. And we created these two endpoints to get the list of existing bands and another endpoint to create new bands. And we created these functions here. Here is the function to get the list of bands where we are using here a local array. And here we have the function to add new bands. So now we are going to create a test and we are going to validate that the endpoints work as we expect. And in our tests, we are going to use some assertions that are provided out of the box by Deno. Okay, so I'm going to close this and I'm going to duplicate this file because what we're going to do is we're going to replicate the same application and router and we're going to add some assertions to the result of calling this application. I'm going to copy this file, name it. This will be server.test.ts. Okay, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to wrap all this within a test. So it's the structure of a test in Deno. This is Deno.test. And here we pass the title or the description of the test. Let's say this is API endpoint, API endpoints. So that's what we are going to test. And the circle parameter is the body of the test where we can use async for this. So this is async and we pass an arrow function. And I'm going to move all this within the body of the test. One special controller that I need to add here is the abort controller. So I'm going to sign it here. Const abort controller. And this controller will allow to stop the application because if I don't stop the application then it's going to throw an error so this is a board controller okay and this controller is part of the deno runtime so if we go within this class we're going to see that we have this read-only property so we need to access to this property and we need to pass that property to the application so this will be const sign now actually like this and this will be equals to a board controller and we need to pass this signal here and at the end of our test we need to abort any existing operations here like this okay and here we can start testing the api so let's call the API so we are gonna we're going to get a response so let's use the fetch operation localhost and the port will be 4000 and we're going to call the bands endpoint this one so I'm going to grab this from here and I'm going to paste it here and here I'm going to assign the JSON response so this will be JSON response, and this will be await, and this is response JSON. And here I can start doing some assertions. So for example, I can use assert not equals, let's say, and here I can pass JSON response and null. And another parameter that I can pass here, this is optional, is a message in case we don't get a successful assertion. So in this case, if the response is null, then it's going to show this message. So here we can say the response or the API response is null. Okay, let's run this test. So this is you know, test dash dash hello net because we are accessing the API endpoint through HTTP and this is server.test.ts and as we can see here 
our test runs successfully. So let's say that I assign null to this response and we should get this message. So let's run this again. And as we can see here, we get the message that we specified here. Okay, now let's work with another assertion that is the assert equals assertion. And this is a pretty common assertion that you can find in any language, in any testing framework or API. So let's add the sentence here. So assert equals. And here we are going to use the JSON response and we're going to access the first element of this array. So let's go here to the function that is part of the controller. And here what we are returning the list of existing bands and the bands are part of this array here. So I'm going to access the first element in the array and I'm going to make some assertions on the name of the band. So let's go back. And here the structure is JSON response dot data, as we can see here in the response. So here is the attribute that we are going to use for the assertion. So let's go back. So this will be the first element of the array. So this will be zero. And we're going to access the name attribute of the object. So the value that we expect here for this name is in this case, Metallica. So I'm going to grab this from here and I'm going to paste it here. And I am going to add a message here. In case the name is not Metallica, I'm going to show this message. So I'm going to enter here the name of the band doesn't match. And here I need to undo this. So we get the response from the server. And now if we run this, then our test. And as we can see here, the test is running as we expect. And if I change the name, let's say I put Metallica one. And if I run the test, I should get the message that I specified here. The name of the band doesn't match. And as we can see here, we get the message that we specified. Okay, and now let's try another assertion that is assert array contains. So I'm going to grab this from here and I'm going to add the assertion here at the end. And I'm going to pass first the response that is the array of bands. The second element is actually an array with the object that I expect as part of this initial value that is another array. So let's say that I extract from here the first element. I'm going to grab this here and I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to create a constant, const Metallica. And here I'm going to pass Metallica as the value that I expect as part of the collection. And I'm going to add a message here. If the value is not part of the array, I'm going to return the response doesn't include the band. Okay, so let's run this again. Let's clear this. And as we can see here, the test is passing. But what happens if I change this band? Let's say, let's use a band that is not part of this array. So let's say Foo Fighters. So I assign another value, Foo, Foo Fighters, Rock, and I change the URL. And here I change the name. And here we're gonna see that we should get this message because the Foo Fighters is not part of the data that I get from the API. So let's run this again. Let's clear this and let's run it. And as we can see here, we get the message as we expect. The response doesn't include the band. Okay, let's undo all this and let's run everything just to check that everything works. 
So let's run this one more time. And all the tests are passing. So this assertion is running successfully. The response is not null. We actually get the array with these three elements. And we also get the name of the first band as Metallica, as we expect, and the same for this element. So this element, this band, is part of the array that we receive from the API. Okay, now let's see how we can debug our application and our tests. So we need to create a new folder. We need to call it .bscode. And we need to create a file. The name should be launch.json. And I'm going to paste the contents here. And let's review it really quickly. So here we need to assign a name. The type will be node. The type of request will be launch. This will be the current working directory. We need to use this value. The runtime executable, that is the command that we use to run Deno, that is actually Deno. And these are the arguments that we need to pass. Run or test, if we are debugging our test. A low net in our case, because we are going to test our API. And we need to specify this one if we are going to add breakpoints. And we need to pass this value and the file. And we need to specify a port for the debugger. Let's say that I want to debug the test. So I'm going to add a test here. And let's go to the test. And let's add a breakpoint here. Let's say here. So I'm going to run this. And I'm going to click here on Start Debugging. Or I can press F5. And as we can see here, we can debug the variables that we receive here. And here we can access this JSON response, or we can access here on the left, and we can check the values of this array, for example. And we can also create watch expressions. So let's say JSON response dot data. And here we can access the array of values. Okay, this is for the test. And we can also run this debugging for the application. So here I need to use run. And let's add a breakpoint in the server. So here. So we are going to add a breakpoint. Let's add a breakpoint here in the controller. Let's say here in the add band endpoint. So I'm going to save this just in case. So let's run this. So I'm going to run start debugging. OK, and now I'm going to open Postman. And I'm going to execute a post request. So I'm going to run this request. And as we can see here, it's going to stop here on line 39. And here we can access to the request. Here we get access to this body variable that contains the elements of the request. And we can debug and we can watch different expressions within this scope. And if I click here on step over, this is going to continue. And here is going to create the band. It's going to generate the identifier for the band. We can watch it here. And we can continue debugging the application. So I'm going to run this. And we should get a response here. Yes. So that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. And I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.